labour point of view, there's a, there's a, there is a labour shortage. And um, you know, if we can if we can set this machine up and it's running on its own and uh, change, call the pallets out and change them while the spindle's running, that's the only time you're making money is when that spindle's running. Tony, we're seeing your popular DVF 5000 here at Mac 2024, but it's not just a standalone machine this time. You've got a pallet system uh, interface to it. Something quite popular here. Yeah, this is, well, this is actually relatively new. So we've done the, the standard AWC system, the eight pallets, for a number of years now. But this is the multi-level, so this can have up to 32 pallets. So this is the this is the difference. Well, I know it's actually quite it's quite a small footprint here. Yeah. I mean, you haven't got 32 on this one, have you? No, this is 24 pallet. Okay, but um, you've still got a lot of pallets for such a small small area. It's compact. You know, that's the whole idea for it. It is a compact system. It's three levels of, uh, of eight pallets on this system. And it's all a DN product, so this completely a DN, uh, a DN yeah. solution, yeah. solution I, su I should say. What about the planning of, you know, the, the, scheduling. the scheduling and all yeah, of that? So I mean, that's kind of one thing in my mind that, that people need to get to grips with and, and think it's easy. And, and it's all built in. Obviously, it is a, a DN product, so that uh, the two work in harmony with one another and uh, all that functionality is built into the separate controller on the unit. And is there like fail safes where something goes wrong or that, you know, you know, that pallet's not got parts and this one has, it kind of yeah, changes yeah. in accordance with what your production's doing? Yeah, of, of course, you can schedule accordingly, you can change the volume of the parts that you need to machine, etc. So it's fully flexible. And we've got it here on a DVF 5000. Is it something that could be integrated to your other products as well? It can be actually. I mean, certainly you can have it on the 4000. Um, potentially you could even have it on a vertical machining center if you wanted to, um, just load the pallets through the side. But it is kind of designed for the five axis machine tools, so the 4000 the, the and the 5000. And for your customer base, I mean, you know, the, the volumes of DM yeah. machines that you sell in the UK, um, there's lots. There's a real variety of, of user, isn't there? Yeah. You know, these very yeah. small shops yeah. up to your, your, your big equipment manufacturers. I mean, where where do you see your positioning for this? Because some people might look at it and go, well, a it can't fit, or b it's too much money. Yeah. Is is it quite broad for you? And do you think this will be something that you will, you know, clearly be successful with? I think if you're looking at a five-axis machine tool. You can't just run it eight hours a day, you know. So straight away, really, we need to be looking to feed the machine tools. So how are you going to feed it? You need some form of automation to be able to feed it. So small footprint. It is relatively cost effective. You know, it's not a seven axis robot at the end of the day. It's a relatively simple pick and place unit to actually load the parts in. So, OK, it's, it's, not, it's not cheap. Um, but ultimately, it feeds the machine and enables you to get that lights out machining. And what sort of questions do people ask you when they come and see these these days? What the, you know, you, you tend to ha having been in, in 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 this industry for a while. Yeah. There's always the sort of standard questions that, or objections maybe and things like that that happen. What would it be with something like this sort of solution? Now, I don't want to appear negative, but it's mm. important to look at all sides. I think certainly, like we spoke earlier, you know, is it something I have to have now, or could I maybe retrofit it in the future? Because um, again, you know, um, that's people are looking to the future, but sometimes can't make the leap all in one go. So that is uh, sometimes that people ask for. But certainly on any technology like this, you've really got to look at the accessories you couple it with. You, know, you need a proper swarf management system. If you're running lights out, you can't put a standard swarf conveyor on. You know, you need mist extraction. You need spindle probing. You need tool probing. So, you know, really when you want to get into this level of automation, it's not just the machine, you've got to couple it with the right equipment. And is it quite easy for you guys to, you know, to look at and go, well, look, you're going to save an hour there, 20 minutes there, and you can put some kind of calculation together where people go, well, if you add it on its own, it's going to do this much work, but if you put yeah. this on it, you're going to quadruple or... You know, yeah, yeah, of course. That, that must be, the, the, I suppose, the area of justification. Well it, well, it is, but I also think, as we know, from a labour point of view, there's a, there's a, there is a labour shortage. And, um, you know, if we, can, if we can set this machine up and it's running on its own and uh, change, call the pallets out and change them while the spindle's running, that's the only time you're making money is when that spindle's running. So we can, obviously, you've got the separate load station there just behind me and you can be loading while you're machining, which I think is the key thing, really. Because if I'd have come to one of these shows 20 years ago, yeah. maybe your machines, they might have been single pallet or twin pallet machines. But yeah. Now it's quite evident that yeah. this is quite a big shift for you. There's yeah. lots of your kit here that is yeah. hosting automation. It's the way the market's going. It's the way the industry has to go. 
for us to remain competitive. We, we have to run round the clock. And um, I think, as you say, really not just our stand, but everybody's showing automation. And uh, the UK needs to catch up, really, for UK manufacturing to be competitive with maybe some, some lower cost uh, manufacturing countries.